Hey friends, this is Jennifer and I'm finally back with another tutorial. In this video I want to show you how I created this magic light up mechanism. And I will also show you how I created this card, including the switch to turn the lights on and off. And also how I built the battery compartment. All three of these cards feature the same magic light up mechanism. The first one is turned on by pushing the stone, while the other two have a switch. And I will use a very simple model to show you how I came up with this mechanism and how it works. It's actually pretty simple. And during the card making part of this video, I will show you how I created the switch and this battery compartment, which makes it easy to replace the battery or to take it out for shipping. All right, so let's get started with the tutorial. To show you how this works, I've created this very simple circuit, just a, a battery and a standard LED and some copper tape. And I have a panel with a die cut star at the position of the LED. One way to deal with the height of the battery is to use foam tape. Um, in the card making part of the video, I'll show you another option. But for my model, I'll use foam tape for simplicity. And I usually use a lot of this stuff to keep my front panel from sagging, um, just leaving room for the battery and the LED. And depending on the type of paper that I've used for my front panel, I previously had the problem that this box that I had created around my LED actually showed up on the front of my card when I turned on the LED. And this is really bothering me. So I thought about how I could prevent this and I took a piece of cardstock that would block off all of the light and cut the same shape into it as I have on my front panel. And as you can see, this prevents this box from showing through my front panel. And I think this makes a huge difference. Um, it's much prettier. And then I thought, what if I use this fact to my advantage? So I placed a piece of uh, low weight paper on top of my dark panel with the cut shape and then I backlit it. And ta-da, the star is visible when the light is uh, turned on and invisible when the light is off. Isn't that amazing? And that's actually the whole secret behind that light up mechanism. It's really that simple. So in the future, I will use this model that I created to check if my cardstock is suitable for this type of card or not. So both of these cardstocks are very light and you can see that the blue cardstock works very well for this technique while the lilac cardstock doesn't work at all. I also noticed that there's a difference between oxide inks and usual distress inks. So I recommend that you check out whatever you plan to use to see if it's suitable or not. Okay, so now that we know how to create a mechanism, I show you what I prepared for my card. So this is my background. I used Victorian velvet ink and oxide ink. And I traced these sparkle shapes using a glitter pen. I've die cut my spooky forest backdrop from white cardstock and ink blended it with hickory smoke and Victorian velvet inks. And for my ghost, I got a little creative. So I needed to make it taller to fit the candies inside of its stomach. So I partially die cut the ghost. So I first die cut the top. Uh, Imagine the pink cardstock to be the cutting plate. And then I shifted it down and aligned the top of the head with the mouse and then just die cut the bottom part. And then I just connected the straight cutting lines on the left and the right with my scissors. And just in case you're wondering why I didn't use the other dies included in the set, they don't have the same size. So I need to stick with the head. I used these iridescent clear drops for the eyes because it makes her look so happy. Since this is a ghost, I didn't want to use black cardstock or dark cardstock to block off the light. Instead, I used two layers of heavyweight white cardstock and eventually inlaid the eyes and the mouth. 
I then used the coordinating dies of the Perfectly Wicked add-on set to cut the candies into her stomach. And then I used a thin vellum paper. Um, so this is just 100 GSM, so it's very see-through. And I stamped the candy images onto this vellum and colored the images in with pink Copic markers. So please ignore the glitter. Uh, it got stuck on some glue that was oozing out. And I adhered these vellum pieces way too early, so I had to create a template for my ghost. So my top piece was cut from a linen paper. It's very thin, so like printer paper. And I also used the arm die to cut, uh, to give her some arms. To make her even prettier, I decided to dress her up with a bow. At this point, I couldn't decide whether to use cardstock or glitter paper. And to show you what it looks like when a ghost eats candy, I will use my fancy circuit that I built earlier and light her up from the back. And isn't this the cutest thing? I'm in love with that. It's so cute. Oh, and one last thing. I used a belly slippers ink to ink plant the edges and I also added some Prisma glitter. To build a cute scene, I used a spooky gate die and cut the post. And I actually cut it from several shades of grey cardstock and I cut out the individual bricks instead of coloring them. And I cut the gate from pink glitter fun foam. So it's not paper, it's a fun foam. And I also used this stuff for the bow because I thought it might be handy uh, because it won't get squished in the mail. For my ground, I cut a piece of pink cardstock using the one of the simple hillside border dies. And I also used two slot dies uh, to create a slot for my tombstones. And I will use these um, gems to decorate the tombstones. Then I'll use some pearlescent vellum and glue it on top of a piece of pink cardstock uh, using a glue stick and then I die cut the moon from that. Further, I used the Craft with Light kit by Chippytronics. This kit includes a roll of conductive fabric tape, which I prefer over copper tape because it's flexible and I think it's, it provides a better conductivity. It also contains a flat battery, which of course can be purchased separately, and also six standard LEDs. I also used this fabric tape that I purchased on Amazon um, back in the times when I used copper tape. And I also used these new animating LED stickers in white fade. I laid out some of my images um, so I can trace my candies or the position of the candies onto a piece of white cardstock that I will use to uh, build my circuit on and I will also trace the position of the battery. And I'll also mark the position for my switch. After that I was able to draw in my circuit uh, connecting the three light positions and the battery. And to make it easier for you to see, I traced those lines with two colors, each for every path. And you have to make sure that you're, that one of the path goes across the switch line. Uh, I will, you will see later why. Then I used a circle die um, to cut a hole for my battery to create a well. And I cut it from two additional, no, from three additional pieces of white cardstock. And because that amount matched the height of my battery. And I will adhere two of those together. And then the circuit piece on top. 
done, we need to create this little hinge piece. Um, I just used copy paper for that. So this is one inch wide and I scored it at one inch and then cut off this little tab and I'll use double sided tape to adhere this hinge piece to the battery well, so on top. And then I can use the tape to follow my traced lines to create my circuit. So, and you can see you have to go on the inside of the hinge so that you get contact to your battery. And we will leave a slit where our switch will end up eventually. Okay, and I'm skipping ahead. And for the end of this path, I will leave a tail that I will feed through to the back. And this is what it will eventually look, look like when you put in the battery. Okay, now let's add our LEDs. So these Chibitronics LEDs are stickers, so they're very easy to attach. You just have to make sure um, to align them correctly with the plus and the minus path. And here you can see why it, it was handy to create this template of my ghost. To make sure I have the LEDs in the correct positions. And since I have this gap in my circuit uh, where my switch will eventually be, I just added a small piece to complete my circuit so I can check if it's working. So it was working somehow, but there was actually a problem um, because the negative path was touching the top of the battery, which causes a short circuit. So I adapted this um, by cutting a slit next to the battery compartment to feed my fabric tape of the negative path through to avoid contact with the plus side of the battery. And I'm skipping ahead to where I have successfully fed the piece through. And now uh, the top of the battery and the negative path are separate from each other and it's working flawlessly. Remember that I cut the battery well into three additional pieces, but just used two so far. So this is the third piece and I'm tracing the positions of the LEDs and the gap in my circuit. So I know where I need to cut my candies and where I need to cut a slit for my switch. And to cut set slit, I'm using this slot die from the Let's Toast pull tab die set. You can also use a uh, craft knife for this, but since I have the die, I prefer to use it. And to create the switch, I use a piece of cardstock that I cut to be one inch wide and I'm scoring it at a quarter of an inch, half an inch, one inch, one and a quarter and one and a half inch. And then I'm folding along those score lines, creating a valley fold to both sides of the half an inch part. So this is really hard to explain. So I hope um, you can see what I mean. So I created both valley folds and this is what this looks like. So you got this double C and the last fold is to close the switch so I can cut off the excess of my paper. And this is my final switch. So and I'm briefly interrupting here with um, a model of this switch to make it easier to understand what we are doing. So we need this switch. So this big vellum piece is my switch to close the gap in our circuit. So the pink tape is our fabric tape and we have the gap in here. And here's the piece with the slit, which will uh, guide our, our switch. 
and we need that switch to close this gap. So I need to figure out where I need to place the conductive tape onto that switch. So I drew the, the position of the slit onto my circuit piece and now I'm placing this switch on my circuit piece having the half inch part facing towards me and having the switch, the top of the switch aligned with the top of the slit. And now I'm tracing the conductive tape of the circuit onto the switch so that I know where I need to place more tape. I'm using blue tape here for the demonstration, but of course you would use the same conductive tape that you used for the circuit. So I'm placing it right where I drew the line and then I can fold my switch and feed it through the slit. So I'm taking the uh, both blue ends and feed them from the back through the slit and then it will look like that. And then I can take some tape to close my switch. So I'm placing some tape on the the shorter loose end and then fold the longer loose end over and close it. And this forms our switch. So we have the conductive tape facing towards the circuit panel and we will place this on top of it. And now you can see there's still a gap, but when I close the switch, the gap is closed and our LEDs will be turned on. And this is how this switch works. So I hope this will make it easier to understand the following steps. Now I'm tracing the slot onto my circuit piece and placing my switch aligned with the top of this slit. So the top of the switch is aligned with the top of the slit. And then I trace my positive path where we have the gap and I'm adding my fabric tape to this marked position. And now when I feed my switch through the slit and place it on the circuit, you can see that you can switch the lights on and off. Since I have added this hinge to my battery, I decided to enlarge my battery hole and also um, die cut the, the candy into my panel. And this is what it looks like. Now I can close my, my switch. And before adhering it to my circuit piece, I'm going to trace the, the candy onto my background since I need to die cut those from the background as well. Now I'm using the candy die to die cut them, but since I made a really poor job lining it up, I just used my scissors to enlarge those holes to not block any of the candies. Just making sure it's hidden behind my ghost. I also need to trace the position of the battery um, onto my card base. So I'm tracing it on the inside of my card base since I'm going to cut it from the inside. Now to finish my switch, I'm using uh, Lawn Fawn Acetate and cut a piece of it as wide as my switch. And then I'm adhering it using double sided tape. And I was afraid that this acetate would not be strong enough um, for the switch. I decided to add a second piece on top of the first one. Off screen, I have started to assemble my background and now I'm going to adhere my switch panel to the circuit panel. And you want to make sure that the switch has contact to the circuit so you want to use liquid glue or tape and no foam tape. And I'm making sure this is well adhered. 
and then checking if the switch works. And now I'm folding the acetate pieces right at the edge of my card. I will explain later why I did that. Then I can adhere my front panel to my other panel, again using liquid glue, to provide some pressure onto the switch to make sure that it has good contact to the circuit. Next, I'm adhering my ghost to my background, making sure the candy lines up. And then I adhered a frame to my card that I created by stacking two pieces on top of each other to give it some stability. And I'm making sure that I put it over the acetate, but not gluing it shut. So I made sure there's no glue where the frame covers the acetate. To complete my battery compartment, I need to cut a door into my card base. So to do that, I'm checking from which side my fabric tape comes. So this is the side where I will have a hinge from of my door. So I'm using a circle die and to perfectly align it with my with my drawing, I cut it from copy paper, gluing this die cut circle right in the center of my drawn circle and now I'm partially die cutting it. So the left side of the circle is cut while the right side is still connected to my card base. And I'm going to connect those two cutting lines with a score line to create a door. And this lines up perfectly with my, with my panel and I can adhere the, the card base to this panel. And then I can adhere the the tail of my conductive tape to the door. Now I'm using the wider conductive fabric tape to add an additional piece inside of my door and also on the inside of my compartment to enhance the conductivity or to make sure there is a good connection to the battery. And this finishes the compartment. So here I unfortunately lost my footage. So I'm redoing the process of finishing the switch. I have this mini card and I'm bending over the acetate pieces and gluing my frame on top making sure I don't glue my switch shut. And I'm doing this to ensure that my switch doesn't float somewhere in um, mid air, but rather lies flat on my card. So this is why I adhere my frame on top of my acetate pieces. And then making sure I still can move it up and down. And then I decided to have one of the strips on top of the frame and one below. So you see, one is tucked under the frame and one is floating free. And now I can cut it to size so the acetate will be hidden behind my moon. And now I'm making sure that it's at its top position so it's pulled out and I'm adhering the two pieces of acetate together so that the top piece is not floating and I'm doing this while my switch is um, pulled out so that I know how far I can place my tape without hindering the switch from working. And now I can attach my moon to the whole length of this top piece of acetate. So this is why I decided to have one piece on top so I have more room to attach my moon. And to make this pull tab even sturdier, I adhered 
several die cut pieces together to make it sturdy enough to serve as my pull tab. I decided to use this no tricks just street sentiment since it fits my scene perfectly and I wanted my banner to have the same color as my glitter paper that I used for the bow and the gate and I mixed Victorian velvet and seedless preserve oxide inks to achieve that. Then I heat embossed my sentiment and cut it out and adhered it to my card. I then decided to stamp and color an additional candy to give to her hand and I used jellyfish ink and these three Copic markers to do so and for the feel of real wrapping paper and maybe to add even more glitter I used an embossing pen and wow embossing glitter on top. On the inside of my card I used the adorable Gould's Night Out washi tape from Lawn Fawn to close my battery compartment. I further silver heat embossed the three sentiment parts have a birthday and day since I haven't decided yet what to use. And then I die cut this cute ghost from the same pearlescent vellum glued on top of pink cardstock that I used for my moon. And I finally die cut the scripty suite from the glitter fun foam that I used earlier. And that finishes my card. I thank you very much for spending so much time with me. And I really hope that this tutorial was helpful and that you enjoyed it. And if you have any question, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them. For my next video, I will work on the flapping mechanism. So stay tuned and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye bye.